you trust Ferguson Roof Systems to replace your roof, we go the extra mile to protect your home and property. On every job, we deploy durable netting to protect your home's exterior and landscaping. It's just one more reason why you should call Ferguson Roof Systems today. Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle back with you again from the Weather Center here at AT's Weather. Glad I could have you here with me. We're going to talk about the threat for severe storms as we head into tomorrow evening across parts of uh, northeastern Texas, southeastern Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, that kind of stuff, and kind of recap what happened here for today. Man, uh, I tell you what, as I was landing out there, boy, the skies were dusty. You guys got quite a bit of wind this afternoon. My goodness, a lot of dust flying around out there. You might still be able to see it, a little bit of the haze to the sky. Let me see if I can see it. Um, a little bit of a glow with the dust in the background. How about that? It's 49 degrees. Uh, the winds have finally calmed down here, so that's good. I'm sure some of you guys are like, that's enough, right? Uh, by the way, Morgan, thank you for the stars out there here for tonight. I appreciate you on Facebook. And let me go over here to my friends on YouTube. Uh, let's see. Good to see you there as well. Usual crew in the house, checking in from all over the state. That's good, always. Uh, let's see, on Twitter, you guys are checking as well, so good to see you. And, of course, on Facebook. By the way, I'm going to put the link in for opting in to the platform. If you are getting late uh, when I go notified, uh, when I go live, then you can click that, and I'll let you know ASAP through your direct message. That way you don't miss it. All right, so that's all the housekeeping is done. Let's just get on with it, shall we? This is Valentine's Day. I don't know about you, but I got some things to do, if you know what I mean. And um, time's ticking. Okay, so out there today, we had wind gusts in excess of 50 miles per hour. Many areas is kind of sprinkled about Oklahoma. I guess the biggest, um, you know, section of that was out here across the western half of the state. We had some um, numbers up around the low 60s. And then once you got into the panhandle, that was some ridiculous wind up here close to 80 miles per hour. Again, this is a severe thunderstorm type criteria wind. There's a lot of some wind damage. So wouldn't be surprised there's a little bit of wind damage out here. Some power poles down because of those winds. Otherwise, quite a, a, a breezy day nonetheless. Now, we did get, of course, some rainfall for that Monday night in a Tuesday time frame um, for the morning. And we had some good rains out there across the eastern third of the state for the most part. They were anywhere from a half inch to uh, just about an inch in many areas. Here across centrals, anywhere from about a third to about half inch at most. So uh, at least, you know, everybody got a little bit of action. Now, as far as the other kind of action, well... We got to talk about that. <laughs> it is that time of the year, believe it or not. And you're like, what? Yeah, it's, actually, it's any time of the year here in Oklahoma. So anyway, we do have a risk of severe weather that has returned across areas of Arkansas, Louisiana, northeastern Texas, southeast Oklahoma. This little um, brown shading is where the uh, ring is for a tornado risk here in this area. And there's also a slight risk there for when it comes, if we break it down to hail, which is this panel here and when this is a panel here now i will tell you this this is all on the light side in other words this is the lowest categories you can go for severe weather so it's not like it's some huge deal it's just you know one of those deals all right here's a look at the uh, state multiple hazards for wednesday i like this graphic from the weather service they're talking about how the state's been broken down into three parts of action part one blowing snow up here around woodward into the panhandle area with accumulations a little over an inch in some regions and then you get to the pain i'll probably get a little bit more than that and then down to the southwest oklahoma we've got gusts up around 30 miles per hour so once again some fire danger criteria down to northwest texas and then the big sexy thing number two and that is the severe weather with damaging winds large hail and potential for a tornado or two so we're gonna look at the data here in just a minute to see what has changed if anything so here's a look at these uh, slight risk here kind of zoomed in does include ardmore barely in the ada also down into the Durant area. So it's kind of give you guys an idea where we're talking. And if we look into the Tulsa, oh, by the way, so hail up to around golf ball size, winds up to around 60 to 80 miles per hour. And you can say low to very low here on the tornado potential. Let's go to the um, breakdown of that. And that's going to be down here between Ardmore, Ada, with a little bit better probability from around Durant, and then along far southeastern, uh, along the Red River in the southeastern Oklahoma. So that's kind of the, the deal there. If you look down at the Tulsa region, uh, nothing really expected for the Tulsa area as far as severe storms goes, uh, just to the south of you toward Muskogee. And then really once you get around the line from McAllister into Fort Smith, and that's where your slight risk will go. And that continues on into Arkansas. Let's take a look at the upper levels. This is the storm system that's coming in from the west. This little bowling ball out here across the Four Corners area. And then by tomorrow evening, I'm gonna put the brakes on right here. So the center of this guy, um, get my low here. Center of this guy's right here. 
So the issue is, and it's not necessarily really an issue, but one of the limiting factors for severe weather uh, across a larger area is that it's pretty far to the north. So the jet stream track kind of runs through this area here. So in other words, it's, it's a little far removed from this sweet spot down here as far as kind of what we call brute forcing in the atmosphere from the synoptic scale of things. So this area doesn't have as much forcing as it could because of the position. Now, if this was a little bit more to the south and east, then yeah, definitely for sure. But because it's just barely in the vicinity, it leads to more of a marginal event. If you look at the jet stream uh, aloft, in other words, go a little higher than that at the 300 millibar level, the winds are all kind of anchored closer to that upper low in this area. So that does mean across the majority of northern western Oklahoma. Again, the, the main area that we're focusing on, if you will notice, is this lull in the upper level wind field. That's a negative, just so you know, when it comes to a severe storm. So we don't have a lot of positive things going. We have a lot of marginal things going for severe weather down here in the far southern and southeastern Oklahoma. Okay, so let's take a look. Did the dew points make it? Uh, last night, I warned you that the her likes to get a little too excited on the moisture return and the tornado potential, and it, it did that. It backed off quite rapidly <laughs> after it got a little excited. Uh, but here is the evening run. The, the serious dews, in other words, in the 60s, and I like 60s for tornadoes for the most part, but they're going to be anchored along the Red River um, and down to southern Texas. So what happens is the models were over excited. They were they were over advertising something they couldn't really deliver. They were over promising. But it's headed to the evening hours after dark where the cap starts to build in, the, the moisture does make it. So the problem is a little too little too late. Now, that said, there's any storm still going in this problem, in this environment, uh, with the low, higher dew points coming in, that could keep a trail threat going for a few hours in the evening down here across far southeast Oklahoma in this little sweet spot here. Even though, again, the upper levels aren't so favorable for it, at least the low-level moisture is. And when you look at specific tornado genesis, uh, the lower half of the atmosphere is more important than the upper half. When it comes to just healthy storm structure, the upper half is almost as important as the lower half. So a little bit of a difference. Okay, so in the evening, uh, we will have a cold front pretty much snaking through 44 kind of zipping down to this region of the state. Um, we should have a, a, a low pressure area out there as well. You might even call it kind of like a boundary of a warm front, cold front. And we'll have kind of a Pacific front, we'll call it a dry line uh, surge out here across the western Oklahoma. And this will eventually, uh, this part here will work its way through and zip on through into the evening hours. This whole front will come down south and, and then everything will kind of clear out as we head into Wednesday night. But for the meanwhile, for the setup here, we have a little bit of light uh, south southeastly wind field here. Some gusts up along the Red River, probably up around 20 miles per hour within this. So the better surface winds way down here in southern Oklahoma. You got to have some good surface winds to feed those storms for tornadoes. That's one of the ingredients that you need. But we also have some snow to talk about. So let's get on with that, sh uh, shall we? Let's take a look here at the time. Again, quite time into tomorrow. So we headed to the 4 o'clock hour. There's your snow, 5 o'clock here in the Panhandle from Liberal Kansas down to Dalhart. Uh, then we're starting to see a little bit of enhancement in the cloud cover. So some thunderstorms trying to develop in southern Oklahoma by 6 o'clock in North Texas. Having a hard time doing so, again, because I think the cap strength uh, and also that lack of deeper moisture. But the snow still happens, it looks like, just north and west of Woodward on in the southwestern uh, Kansas. I'm going to back it up an hour. I'm going to show you what the forecast sounding looks like in this area up here in the northern Texas, right across Red River. And you will see that the models still indicate a pretty decent cap holding on just barely um, in the atmosphere uh, with the sounding that is or a forecast environment for the wind profile to be decent. Um, so again, that would be potential for tornadoes should a, a storm actually grow and get rooted in the boundary layer in that area. Now that's uh, in the evening. If we go to 7, 8 o'clock, uh, models are still having a tough time down here in this region. Not overly excited, but you look up here in Woodward, you guys are getting some snow by the time you hit 8 o'clock hour, and that continues on west from there. Thunderstorms do get going out here in southeast Oakland by 10 o'clock. And again, we'll look at just the forecast environment out ahead of those storms, see what's changed in the model data. Uh, let's see. So quite a bit moisture laden here at the lower levels. That means if any storm continues, it will have plenty of moisture at the lowest levels to work with. Instability is still present, so they should last. In other words, they should not die out. The other thing is the wind field has increased a little bit more in strength. The hodograph is still ugly, but it's, it's, it'll do the job. And if you look at the total strength probability, 
it's up around the significant level. In other words, not a weak tornado, but a significant tornado. Now, of course, that would be nighttime in the evening, so that would not be good. Hence why the Storm Prediction Center has kept that risk down here for far southeast Oklahoma. And again, that's 10 o'clock at night. So it'll be a, a kind of a later show. So you could have some uh, trails, for example, mornings in the southeastern part of the state and might even you know, have a winter weather advisor up here in the northwestern part of the state, uh, the way things are going. We've had it you know, in the past. We've had trail warnings southeast, blizzard warnings northwest. Uh, we're not going to get any blizzard warnings, but we're going to get some, at least a little bit of snow out there blowing around. Uh, the uh, severe weather potential, when I look for storm tracks, anything like that, we're looking at the uh, latest HER. So this is the one that went a little crazy last night, and it backed off tremendously tonight. But here's the latest data for it. Doesn't even produce any helicity tracks at all, but it does have some rough thunderstorms going on down here in southeast Oklahoma. Again, during that 9 and 10 o'clock hour, uh, I'll take a look at the HER. We were looking at the high-resolution NAM a minute ago. HER is kind of the same, a little messy on the hodograph and the wind field, but it's got enough, well, in theory, it's enough moisture to keep things going. Uh, its data is not nearly as clean, but that's okay. All right, let's go on to rainfall outputs for this event. So this, of course, will be all snow in this region, but this will be rainfall another quarter to half inch in some of these areas. If you get a really heavy thunderstorm, you might pick up a quick inch of rainfall down there, but they don't even need it down there. They already had plenty the other day so they don't need more rain now we're looking at temperatures tomorrow in the afternoon we're going to be cooling down because of the cold front coming in right so it won't be as nice after late after like five o'clock than it will be during the earlier part of the afternoon as we'll start to cool things down but down here in southeast oklahoma still stay pretty mild we're looking at upper 60s and then here in the panhandle look at that 20s for the evening hours and that's why they're going to see snow in that area of the state speaking of which uh let's see this is the I don't really like to use the NAM model for snow because it always overdoes it. But just to show you what it overdoes it as, it's got some spots up here at six inches, which is a little silly, but you know, it's fun to look at, right? If you kind of do a model blend up here, it's anywhere from one to two inches. And then once you get deeper in the panhandle, it does ramp up close to six to seven as you're telling me far western Oklahoma panhandle toward southern and southeastern Colorado. And I'll zip on into that area so you can see the snowfall amounts for Kansas, where most of them have been anywhere from three to four to five inches. And then you got the northwestern corner of the state. Looks like up around seven and a blend of the latest snow. So that's a really good snowmaker if you guys up in Kansas and southern Nebraska. So nothing has changed there. Uh, wind fields. Talk about the winds tomorrow. Uh, obviously not quite as windy as they were today. Then a snapshot here for the uh, 7 o'clock hour to show you the winds up here in the panhandle. will be up around 30 miles per hour. Might have some gusts up to around 35. So that would be for some blowing snow, some reduced visibilities out here. So if you do live in that area traveling, keep that in mind. You might encounter some reduced travel because of just what's happening with the weather. Now, if I do look at the replay of this through time, we'll start tonight into tomorrow. We'll show you how the winds kind of change. So this is plotting just the wind gusts. And you can see the gusty up toward the morning hours across the northern parts of the state. There's that cold front already kind of moving through and then kind of washes out, but it has a good wind with it in the morning. And then in the afternoon and evening, there's more wind that kicks in. So Wednesday night, more 30 to 40 mile per hour winds, especially out in western Oklahoma through Thursday morning, and then by the time you head to Thursday afternoon, things die down quite a bit, and we can say goodbye to that ridiculous wind. So all this was in my blog I posted on Sunday that we'd have a heads up as to how this week was going to go with that extra wind in our region. Now, I did not look at a couple of other data sources, which I wanted to do because I just had to, I literally got off the presses, hot off the presses to get home and eat and then load this thing up. So I'm just curious to see what the Texas Tech Wharf did. Oh, it backed off com completely compared to what it was doing last night. It was also out to lunch. All right, so it's much more tamer uh, across uh, southern Oklahoma and southeast. It doesn't have a slew of helicity tracks. So like this guy right here, that's a helicity track. Got a bunch of those uh, in that data last night that was all in this area. And I think it was out to lunch. It was overdoing it along with the her. So both of those have backed off tremendously. And again, I'm, I'm thinking that's because it just didn't have that deep moisture that it needed and most of the wind filled with the system is just up to the north and west so it's not it's not perfectly aligned there's too many ingredients that aren't quite ideal doesn't necessarily mean that something can't happen but it's it's not like it's gonna be a widespread deal but i wanted to see that data just to see um what that was out there and then i don't think anything else i want to see in my little list here so we'll just call it that all right, so here's a look at your temperatures. So tomorrow, 
Oh, you know what? Let me do that real quick. So um, I kind of give you a snapshot of the temperatures, but let me just show you how they cool down during the day. Because I mean, you're probably planning, and it'll be different, I think, between morning to afternoon. So let's go ahead and look at that. So still cool in the morning. We're in the 50s, but you know that's usual. All right, we'll drop you down into the, by the time we get to daybreak hours, excuse me, that was overnight tonight. So by the time we get to daybreak hours, we're back into the 30s north, 40s central, 50s southeast. All right, then we will rebound a little bit. So we're back into the 50s at lunchtime across the I-44 corridor, 40s northwest, 70s along the Red River in the afternoon. So we get, see what I'm saying? We get pretty warm there. We get close to Looks like probably a south side of town, uh, was at 4 o'clock? We'll probably be close to 68, 70, yeah, around Norman. So you can see how temperatures will be much warmer uh, in the afternoon hours before the cooling elements of that cold front knock us back down in the evening. So now we're back into the 50s here by 7. We'll drop back down Wednesday night. Uh, by midnight, we're back around 40. 30s north and west, and then by the time we head to the morning hours on Thursday, we're back into the 20s. Uh, along the I-44 corridor, north and west, 30s elsewhere from there, and then kind of a cool start on Thursday. But the afternoon isn't horrid. We're back into the, uh, oh, 40 degree range, roughly. So a little chilly day on Thursday, but it's brief, right? And then oh, the cold start on Friday, and then we'll rebound for Friday afternoon. And that's where these uh, long range temperatures here, I was going to show you. So now we add about 10 degrees to it on Friday. So we get right back up on the weekend to we're back into the 50s and the 60s. And then over the next few days after that, still looking pretty good. Uh, overnight lows will be into the 40s uh, once we get past these next couple of nights. So cool next, or chilly next couple of nights for that. All right. I think I've pretty much told you everything there was to tell you. I try to make it as short as possible. Um, by the way, Dina, thank you for the stars on Facebook. Appreciate you. Uh, Morgan, also thank you for the stars I mentioned earlier in the broadcast. And who else? Uh, Tabitha, and uh, appreciate you as well. So, hey, I got to run, um, but I will be around tomorrow, late afternoon and evening. But it does look like a couple of those storms may try to produce a tornado, and I will cover those live. Um, if you guys are watching down around the Dallas area, again, you're kind of fighting a cap. Um, and we'll have to see if that breaks down that far south. Right now, the model data does not suggest it. Uh, but usually sometimes you have to wait till the day of the event in the morning to kind of see what the atmosphere really looks like. And that's when our best guess on the, on the model data can really look into that data and, and produce whatever the best thing they can give you for the outcome. Uh, that's really not a cap will break. Uh, but anyway, so that's the area to watch for. I'm pretty much just kind of north and east of you guys right now in the southern Oklahoma around Ardmore and then pretty much hugging the Red River uh, east from there uh, in the southern Arkansas late in northern Louisiana. So right now that's the threat and we'll see if that uh, shrinks a little bit or kind of weakens or more. Right now the model data isn't all that uh, excited about it, but it does have at least a few indications where if the storm could really just, you know, find its perfect sweet spot, then it could produce a tornado. And if so, we'll watch it. All right, so listen, you guys have been great. Thanks again for your uh, watching tonight, your um, support, liking, sharing, all that kind of stuff for the videos and the channel. And we'll talk again soon. Take care, everybody. Good night.